KSC, presents. When a guy finally opened this locked box, he discovered the keys to another mystery. On June 14, 2018, an Ember user with the handle Microfever Journey posted a photo of a box next to a banana. The banana was just there for scale, of course, but the box itself was an enticing proposition. So too was the post's title, I found a locked safe box in a console chuck out. And just like that, an epic journey of discovery seemingly began. The unofficial rule of posting about locked boxes or safes on Imgur is that they must eventually be opened. And if the original poster, or OP, in Imgur speak, fails to abide by this rule, they risk provoking the ire of other users. It's not surprising, then, that Michael Fewer Journey's first line of description read, I'm going to try and open, the box. In fact, it seems that the uploader's first thought had been to attempt to live stream their box opening efforts. Unfortunately, however, the technical capabilities required to do this are apparently not part of Inver's tech. The updates were therefore not forthcoming. Okay, I'll do this offline and post when I've finished, the OP later promised. So, with the live stream idea proving a dead end, Microfewer Journey seemingly resorted to the tried and tested method instead. And that's doing the deed offline and reporting back on it later. This led to the OP. Sharing an update the following day. This new post was, in fact, given a parenthesized part 1 so you just knew that there was going to be plenty of intrigue. The first line of the new post also promised that there were more updates to come. I'll show you where I'm at now and do a part 2, later, Microfewer Journey wrote. The uploader then reaffirmed that they'd originally found the box in a console chuck out. Presumably, this means that they'd picked it up for free before the console had gotten rid of it. However the OP supposedly got hold of the box, though, they had apparently already given it a little shake. Microfewer Journey admitted that there was, after all, something inside the box. And while they evidently didn't know what it was, the Amurian guessed that it sounds like a few coins. The only thing left to do, then, was to crack the thing open. Unfortunately for Microfewer Journey, though, this was seemingly going to be a harder task than they may have originally thought. In fact, the uploader believed that somebody else had already tried their luck getting into the box. From the looks of it, a previous treasure seeker had attempted to drill into the rear of the box to force it open. This clearly hadn't worked, however. But the new hole did apparently give the OP a chance to have a closer look at the locking mechanism. And that seemingly gave them an idea. Using what Microfewer Journey ominously referred to as, their picks like everybody has a set of lock picks hanging around, the Amurian then apparently tried to open the lock themselves. Alas, this also seemed to fail, but the OP believed they knew why. The shaft just spins freely, they wrote. The Amurian also offered an explanation as to why the shaft supposedly wasn't working. I'm assuming the person broke the lock and was unable to open it, they wrote. Specifically, Microfewer Journey seemed to think that the drill used in the creation of the hole had damaged the shaft that would open the box. The next experiment that Microfewer Journey claimed to undertake was, well, jamming a pencil into the drill hole. Yet according to the uploader, the pencil just pressed the lock keys down without making any difference to the shaft. The box, therefore, remained distinctly closed. So the OP then seemingly decided to bring out the heavy machinery. To the garage. Microfewer Journey exclaimed. I have an angle grinder. The only problem was that the Amgurian apparently had no idea how to operate said instrument without causing themselves harm. It makes me sweat just looking at it, they admitted. Yet that, evidently, wasn't going to get in the way of them opening this box. So the next thing that Microfewer Journey reported doing was clamping the box down. Then, they allegedly tried out the grinder on the box's steel exterior. This first attempt seemingly didn't go very well, though. Had to stop and change my underwear, the uploader confessed presumably with their tongue lodged firmly in their cheek. 
regardless of whether Mike of your journey actually did require a fresh pair of undergarments, they were apparently back to their box opening antics shortly afterwards. And it seems that they were still determined to give the angle grinder a shot. So what was the plan of attack? Why, to slice into the top, of course. Except that, cutting through the steel reportedly wasn't as easy as it looked. That makes a horrible noise, Mike of your journey wrote. And what's more, the small scale action apparently left the Angurian safety goggles with a bit of a visibility problem. So a change of tactic was evidently called for. How about if I grind the hinges off the back? Mike of your journey pondered. The idea was probably that if the OP could somehow crack through the hinges then the box's top would just pop open. There seems to be some logic to this as, after all, how could a panel stay closed without any hinges? All the uploader seemingly managed to do, however, was create a little bit of a dent in the back of the box. Not even close, Mike of your journey admitted. But, if at first you don't succeed then try, try again. And that was apparently exactly what the OP intended to do. Alas, the second attempt supposedly proved just as fruitless as the first. It also appeared to extremely frustrate the uploader. Are they fake hinges? How can they be so thick? Mike of your journey raged. The angle grinder apparently also left the box too hot to handle. The Amurian therefore said they'd take a break before trying again later. The OP couldn't have been gone too long, though, because part 2 of this epic journey was posted on the same day as the first installment. One thing that had seemingly changed in the interim, however, was Mike of your journey's choice of tool. Yes, the angle grinder was now apparently a thing of the past. So what was the plan this time around? Well, it seems that Mike of your journey was going to adopt a more subtle tactic than grinding the box into submission. In fact, the Amurian suggested that their new aim involved simply drilling out the lock. And it seems that this strategy was much more successful than the last one. Drilled out. Mike of your journey triumphantly exclaimed. This was accompanied by an image that seemingly offered a better view inside of the locking mechanism. So when the exterior lock had been in place, it had presumably been used to turn these pins to pop open the lid. Without the lock, though, it was evidently time to crack out the picks again. Mike of your journey had already documented a failed attempt at using the picks, of course. This time around, then, they seemingly made a few adjustments to their approach in order to guarantee success. And the first step towards this was apparently placing the still locked box into a mount. I mounted, the box in a better position and put, a, torsion wrench in the lid to provide a bit of feel, the Amurian wrote in their post. In case you don't know, a torsion wrench, or tension wrench, is another piece of lock picking gear. Specifically, it helps to hold down the lock's manipulated pins while the user figures out how to pick the others. Alas, it was seemingly all to no avail. The levers never caught, and the box torsion had no effect on the levers, Mike of your journey revealed. Fortunately for those now fully invested in this endeavor, though, the OP apparently had a plan B. And that was evidently to use a multi-tool. Mike of your journey then chose this moment to include a picture of their robot scorpion. It appears that this has little do with opening the box. In fact, it was posted in order to make sure readers were still paying attention. Earlier on, after all, the OP wrote, I'll be posting a random image further down to confuse those who aren't reading. After the Scorpion, it was back to the main event. According to the post, Mike of your journey then used their multi-tool to finally prize the lid of the box open just enough to work with. They then supposedly jammed a screwdriver into the newly created gap and whacked it even wider. And with that, the container was seemingly ready to reveal its secrets. Well, almost ready. The Amurian, it seems, didn't want to give up the goods right away. So instead they shared this picture of the still-closed box and a clean workspace. Tidying the bench, making the suspense last a bit longer, Mike of your journey wrote, cheekily. 
but it only delayed the inevitable for one more slide. And here it is, the moment that everybody had been waiting for. So, after all the uploader's evident hard work, Mikafee Journey revealed that inside the box was, a set of keys. Oh, the OP wrote. That would actually seem to be a pretty accurate reflection of what all the readers had no doubt been feeling too. Mikafee Journey then confessed, before you ask, no, there were no safes or locked doors in, the council chuck out for those keys. But regardless of the underwhelming outcome, the OP concluded that they'd had fun during the journey. And it should be noted that not every open the box tale has such a downbeat ending. Just take this next story, for example. This tale was shared by Imgurian Thorhees on December 2, 2014. The opening picture in her post was of a blue safe that had evidently been manufactured by Summit. Thorhees accompanied the photo with the caption, I've had this plastic safe for a while and I heard Imgur like safes. Fortunately, there was very little messing about when it came to getting inside this safe. Thorhees revealed its contents in just the third photo of her gallery, in fact. So for the rest of the post, she presented close-ups of many of the items hidden inside the safe. After a brief look at Thorhees 2009 homecoming passport, she offered a glimpse at the dozens of ticket stubs she'd apparently retrieved from the safe. The assorted collection featured movie tickets, Broadway tickets and gig tickets. One dated back as far as 1994, so it seems that this Amgurian might be something of a hoarder. It's intriguing to note the varied interests exhibited in Thorhees' display of tickets too. If you look closely at the concert stubs, for instance, you'll see the names of heavy metal bands such as Magadith, Iron Maiden and Lamb of God. But if you then take a peek at the movie stubs, you'll find family-friendly films including Wall-E, Spider-Man and The Pink Panther. Thorhees then showed off some souvenirs from her school days. These, for instance, are old coach tickets and apparently they were a big deal at her elementary school at the time. The Amurian also revealed some other bits and bobs from her younger days, including novelty erasers and a bunch of stickers. Clearly, the safe has been used to collect sentimental keepsakes from throughout Thorhees' life. Take this next item, for example. At first glance, it perhaps just looks like a leftover piece of trash. But, in actual fact, it's the wrapping from this Amgurian's first ever bottle of booze. Moving swiftly on, Thorhees then displayed a see-through box from, by the looks of things, Texas. And inside the box are what appear to be some pretty stones. But if you look really closely, you might just spot a pair of, hopefully, Thorhees old, fallen out teeth. Nice. The next thing that Thorhees offered was a close-up of some currency. There's a $2 bill on display here as well as a few US and UK coins, among other miscellaneous cash. The $2 bill is perhaps the most interesting, though, as it's relatively rare to see them in circulation. Or at least they're not as common as $1 bills. In any case, the note was eye-catching enough for the OP. To store it in a safe. Thorhees, it seems, had also apparently stored these Discovery Zone tokens, probably as another keepsake from her past. Discovery Zone was, you see, a kind of indoor soft play and arcade destination for kids. And presumably to play on its games consoles, consumers needed one of these tokens. They're of no use now, though, as Discovery Zone closed for good in 1999. The Amurian certainly seems to have a thing for coins, as she's seemingly collected a couple of other noteworthy pieces. In particular here is a half dollar, featuring the likeness of President John F. Kennedy, and a bicentennial quarter. The latter was created in the mid-1970s to celebrate, you guessed it, 200 years since the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Finally, Thorhees brought her post to a conclusion by exhibiting a coin, seemingly still in its wrapping, featuring Bill Clinton on the obverse. Where did I even get this? She asked. Well, that's hard to say. But if the Amgurian is ever in need of a commemorative presidential coin, she now knows exactly where to find one. Thank you for watching.
and don't forget to subscribe.